That's what makes this show so valuable. Yeah, we're not just spewing stuff that we off the top of our head. We're bringing guys in that are smarter than us. Consider us as your real estate concierge. Call me all things real estate, credit, refinancing, buying a house. And now the show that gives you the latest and most relevant housing market news. Real Estate Radio Boston with financial expert Rick Shearer and legal professional Ali Alavi. Do you think uh, that condominium associations in general are sort of overstepping their uh, boundaries by creating these massive restrictions uh, in the condominium documents? I'm going to give an example. Uh, We're seeing more and more associations that are talking about adding rental restrictions, not allowing current owners to be able to rent their units. In the first instance, you asked, are they overstepping their boundaries by putting in restrictions, and the answer is no. The Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts has said that while generally restrictions in real estate are aboard, a condominium is an appropriate place to have restrictions. But with regard to the rentals, there comes a question of whether or not the rental restrictions are restricting sales. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's a really interesting issue, and you can argue both sides of the coin on this. Many times, unit owners will not want to buy into an association that has a rental restriction, not because they aren't planning on living there, because they are, but they're thinking of their future. What happens if I am transferred out of the state for a year and I want to rent my unit because I want to come back? What happens when I go to sell this? Am I limiting my market of available buyers? Mm -hmm. So unit owners can be reluctant to opt into that scheme or amend their documents. Well, you have people who want restrictions because there are a lot of problems sometimes with renters. Mm -hmm. Renters do not have the same um, attitude toward the property than an owner would. Sure. An owner wants to see the values kept up. Speaking as an association attorney, I think any association that fails to budget 10% of their um, income to reserves is foolish, whether or not it's a Fannie Mae issue. Yeah. You need that to yeah. be a well-functioning association. But there are other competing interests, as I said, on the rental part, Uh, whether or not it's deemed to be what is called in the law restraints on alienation, which, as we know, FHA frowns upon. Now, from the point of view of the association, the association has no responsibility to a prospective buyer. Sellers are unit owners, and they're going to say that um, the association is killing their sale. There's a few points here. One is, if if you're not all about following rules and regulations, um, maybe condo living is not the best thing for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to give it a shot and want to take a look at uh, buying a condo, the most important part is reviewing those condo documents with your attorney. Hello, I'm Henry Goodman. And from, I'm Ellen Shapiro. And we're from Goodman, Shapiro, and Lombardi, LLC, with offices in Dedham, Massachusetts, and Lincoln, Rhode Island. Uh, and we're attorneys representing approximately 800 condominium associations. Uh, and um, we were just on WBZ with Rick Shearer and Ali Alavi. And it was a great experience, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh, they are so much fun. They're great at leaving, leading us to questions and helping us to find our own areas to discuss because we're lawyers and we can bore people very easily. But they make it a painless experience for us. And 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 for our listeners. (laughs) And a fun experience as well. Absolutely. So I hope everyone tunes in and listens to them, and uh, hopefully you'll listen to us as well.